Hello, the fairy tale forest friends. Get ready for another enchanting journey into the world of magic and wonder. Our fascinating story today is Flying Crate. Once upon a time, in a distant land, there lived a wealthy and wise merchant. This merchant had so much money that he could cover the entire street with gold and silver. However, besides being rich, he was also a shrewd businessman, knowing very well how to spend and accumulate his wealth. He wasn't stingy, but he avoided unnecessary expenses. The wealthy merchant had a son who was nothing like him. He was extremely lazy. The son did not heed his father's advice spending his days idly and boasting to his friends as if he had earned the money himself. Days passed, and the merchant grew old, becoming increasingly worried about his son. He feared that his son, who had never worked and was not responsible, would never lead a proper life. One day, the merchant summoned his son and decided to give him one last piece of advice. Look! My son, don't try to impress people around you. Never compromise your values to influence them. There is a great treasure within you. Find it and be true to yourself, he said. These words entered one ear of the merchant's son and went out the other. He didn't quite understand what his father meant, and shortly after, he lost his father. The merchant's wealth became an inheritance for his son. Now, all the money and gold that belonged to his father were his. The son, who loved showing off, quickly gathered people around him, organized parties to impress them, and hosted extravagant dinners. Can you believe it? Sometimes, he would throw his gold into the sea as if it were just stones. Instead of forming genuine friendships, his sole focus was on impressing those around him. In this way, days passed, and the vast fortune was quickly depleted. When his money ran out, there was no one left around him. Left with only slippers on his feet and a robe, he found himself alone. His false friends abandoned him immediately. Only one among them, a loyal friend, sent him a chest and reminded him that he needed to pull himself together. Now, the merchant's son found himself stranded in the middle of the street with a chest. The chest was empty, and he had no idea what to do with it. As night fell, cold winds began to blow, and the son, who now had no home to shelter in, opened the lid of the chest and got inside. Suddenly, the chest began to rise slowly and started flying in the air. The merchant's son was quite scared when he saw that he was rising towards the clouds, but the flying chest advanced with unwavering confidence. Leaving the bright full moon behind, the chest passed through the clouds, traversing seas and oceans throughout the night sky. As the morning sun rose, the sun realized they were crossing high mountains. It was wonderful to roam freely in the sky inside the flying chest, and the view from above was magnificent. After progressing like this for a while, the chest began to descend finally landing in the land of the Turks. With only his robe and slippers, the son, who still had his chest as his sole possession, hid it under a tree to ensure he wouldn't lose it and started exploring the surroundings. This place was very different and wonderful compared to his own country. While wandering through the market, he noticed a grand palace in the distance on the horizon. The merchants in the market were very friendly, and during his conversations with them, he learned that the magnificent structure was a palace of the sultan, and, of course, there were tales of the princess whose beauty was legendary. Curious, 
The merchant's son approached a ceramic vendor on the corner and inquired about the princess. The princess? Ah, the sultan cherishes the princess with legendary beauty. He does not show her to anyone. The merchant's son became even more intrigued, remembering that he had a magical flying chest. When night fell, he hopped onto his chest and began to fly towards the grand palace. When he saw the princess's window, he dove inside. The princess, seeing someone intruding uninvited through her room's window, became quite angry. Who are you? What audacity is this? By what right do you enter my room? She exclaimed. Our young man tried to explain himself, but the princess was so beautiful that his tongue was tied in her presence. One of the merchant's son's best skills was storytelling, and he eagerly began to tell a tale. He wove a story about being an angel who flew all the way here to marry her. Of course, the princess didn't believe this lie, but she was enchanted by the story the stranger told. It's not nice to tell lies to impress me, stranger. But to be honest, you tell very beautiful tales. My father, the sultan, loves funny stories, and my mother appreciates tales filled with wisdom. Go, think of a beautiful story, then present yourself before my father, and as they permit, I will meet with you, the merchant's son, saying, I will prepare the most beautiful story to see you again, hopped onto his chest and flew away. Day and night, he began to think of a story that was both captivating and full of wisdom. He had worked hard, put in effort, and when he completed his story, he made his way to the palace. They brought him before the sultan and the princess. Our young man began to tell his story. Once upon a time, there was a bundle of matches that boasted excessively about themselves. Their family tree, that is, the large pine tree they were cut from, was once a grand, old tree in the forest. The tree was cut down, turned into matches by large machines. Now, the matches stood next to an old iron pot in the kitchen. The arrogant matches never stopped talking about themselves, trying to impress those around them. We were a grand green tree, growing among lush green branches. We thrived on morning and evening dew drops. Whenever the sun shone, we felt its warm rays. We knew we were wealthy because other trees only wore their green outfits in the summer, but our family could manage to stay green in both summer and winter. They loved us so much that they quickly took us and turned us into skillful matches for kindling fires. Humans depended on us to light their fires. We are so skillful, so special, so amazing. The iron pot standing next to the matches grew tired of their constant self-praise. No, aren't you tired of talking about yourselves all the time? How about discussing nature, science, or humanity? Has anyone seen the Baltic Sea, for instance? That's beautifully said remarked the plates. They too were fed up with the matches only talking about themselves. That would be lovely, exclaimed the water bucket. Let's talk about literature and poetry, joyfully creating a few water fountains and sprinkling water on the floor. The carpet sweeper also approved, initiating a delightful conversation among themselves. The plates enjoyed this conversation and happily clinked together. However, the matches were not pleased with the attention shifting away from them, and they soon spoke up. We, you know, we, just as they were about to start praising themselves again, a woman entered the kitchen. Placing the pot on the stove, the matches eagerly stepped forward. They wanted to be at the forefront, to be the first, 
wanting to impress everyone. In one swift move, the woman struck the matches and lit the fire. Even as the flames flickered, they were saying, let everyone see how wonderful we are. Look, we're shining, giving off fantastic light. However, their voices didn't last long. A bundle of matches turned to ash in a few seconds, burned out. Nothing remained of them, no light, no trace. The pot, which had nourished hundreds of people with strong flames for years, sighed, saying, Ah, they burned themselves to impress us. The merchant's story had come to an end, and there was a brief silence. The sultan said, What an impressive story! The shah also found it quite entertaining and took a liking to the young man. You are a very clever young man and a good storyteller. I permit you to meet my daughter, he said. The merchant's son was overjoyed at this. Allow me to introduce myself, he said. The merchant's son thought he needed to talk about his father and the old wells, but just then, sounds started coming from outside. There was a beautiful fireworks display happening. The sultan and his daughter eagerly looked outside and stopped listening to the young man. The merchant's son was happy that he had impressed them, but it wasn't enough for him. He wanted to impress them even more. An idea struck him, and as soon as he left the palace, he went and bought fireworks and various rockets. If I fill my flying chest with these fireworks, I can illuminate the sky and impress them even more, he thought. He filled the magical flying chest with fireworks and took off. However, there was something he hadn't considered. The moment he led the fireworks, the flying chest caught fire and began to plummet rapidly. Nevertheless, the boy, who narrowly escaped a major accident, remembered his father's words while nursing his wounds and finally understood what he meant. Never burn yourself to impress others. Be yourself. Though he learned the lesson rather late, the merchant's son succeeded in taking something from his experiences. When he started writing stories and telling them to others, he realized that he was truly happy in being himself. He now understood the value of creating and earning. Traveling from country to country, he told many stories and began to have real friends around him. The work he enjoyed was also bringing him money. The fairy tale ends here. Thanks for joining our adventure in the fairy tale forest. If you love the story, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more magical tales. Until next time, happy storytelling. Bye-bye.